Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The title of the special number today is I Come to the Garden Alone. When you are in the garden with Jesus and you walk with the Lord and He walks with you and starts with you, you will enjoy His presence. The Lord will bless you as this. Listen in Jesus' name. Amen.
God for that special number. By the grace of God, you will walk with God, you will talk with God, and God will talk with you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to hear from you. Holy Spirit of God, send your word into our lives and make your word to rejuvenate us for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quicken us through your word today, O Lord. Amen. And strengthen our inner man. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. For Lord. we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, at this time, I will want you to pick your Bibles with me. Pick your Bibles with me. And open with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 22. And I'm also, also going to read from Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis, chapter 5. I'm reading verse 22. It says, And... Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And Enoch walked with God. Open again with me to the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. It says, These are the generations of Noah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. Beloved, by the grace of God this morning, I'm sharing with us on the subject that I called walking with God. Walking with God. Walking with God. There are different categories of people who claim to be serving God. Beloved, the first category of these are those who do not know God. And you may be wondering, they do not know God, yet they claim to be serving God. They do not know God, yet they come to church. Beloved, God brings them to church. Not because they know him yet, but for them to be able to know him. God brings them to church to show them his power. God give them, brings them to church to give them the opportunity to know him. I had the story of a man, a satanic man, who did not know God, but came to church with the aim of attacking a pastor. But when the pastor appeared, and the pastor shouted, let's shout hallelujah. And the whole congregation shouted hallelujah. Suddenly, a miracle happened in the body of the satanic man who came to church. The man had a swollen testis. Beloved, that testis, I mean, broke up immediately and became small. As soon as this man saw it, he raised up his hands and started shouting that God has healed him. This man did not know God, but God brought him to church to have a personal encounter with him. I pray for all those who are part of this service today. This service will be a service of personal encounter with God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for everyone listening to me. There will be supernatural manifestation of God's power in your life today in the name of Jesus. Beloved, the second category of people who come to church are those who claim to know God but are not working with God. They claim to know God. They confess that they know God. But when you look at their lives, they do not want to move closely with God. These type of people think that it's only the pastor who must move closely with God. These type of people think that they, are, they need to be far away from God. Yet, they come to church on Sunday, beloved. They are like the children of Israel, whose lives were described in Exodus chapter 20, verse 21. Exodus 20, verse 21 says, And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Beloved, 
Many Christians don't want to move closely with God today. Many Christians are not working with God. And God is asking me to speak to you today. God does not want you to be far away from Him. God wants you to work with God. Beloved, this brings me to the third category of people that you find in the church today. Those who claim to know God and who are working with God. I want to ask you today, are you working with God? In your own life, are you working with God? Yes, you come to church, but please, are you working with God? It's true, you said that you are a Christian, but I want to ask you today, are you working with God? The passage that we read this morning, they are testimonies of people, testimonies of Noah, testimonies of Enoch. We are told, and Noah walk with God, and Enoch walk with God. Beloved, what are the testimonies that will be written about your own life? Will it be said of you that you came into this world and you walk with God? Will it be said of you that you are a Christian who walk closely with God? And that's why I want to ask yourself personally, are you really working with God? Are you working with God as a child of God? The way you are living your life now, can we say that God is the one you are working with? So, beloved, who are you working with? Are you working with God? What does it mean to work with God? What does it mean to work with God? Beloved, number one, to work with God means to live a life of very close relationship with God. To live a life of very close relationship with God. I will ask you, are you working closely with God? What again does it mean to work with God? To work with God means to live a life of total obedience to God. To God's guidance and God's leading. I want to ask you this morning, Christian life, are you obedient to God? Is God the one leading you to do what you are doing now? What again does it mean to work with God? Beloved, to work with God means to be an addicted follower of Jehovah God. An addicted follower of Jehovah God. When we look at the way you are living your life now, can people look at you and say that you are, you are addicted to Jesus Christ? Can people look at you and say that you are so, so too close to God Almighty? Beloved, you need to work with God. What again does it mean to work with God? To work with God means to make the Almighty God the shepherd of your life. The one who is guiding you in the way we should go. The one who is telling you, go this way and you obey him. The one who is telling you, stop and you stop. Are you working with God in your own life? I want you to ask yourself this sincere question. Are you really working with God? Beloved, are you really working with God? Yes. This is the question that God is asking me to share, to put before every one of us. Beloved, are you working with God? Yes. I asked the testimony of a professor who was working with God. Beloved, this professor, because he was working with God, was making great progress and success in his academic career. Unfortunately, Others who do not know his gods became jealous of him. They started to attack him. To their surprise, they will throw satanic arrows at him. The arrows will bounce back to the sender. Beloved, they will set trap to cause him trouble. That trap will catch the owners of those traps. And 
Sometimes they even send students to come and put him into trouble. The student themselves are the one who will suffer. Beloved, why? The man was working with God. Some students became curious. They wanted to know the secret of this professor's life. They duplicated illegally the key to his office. And they entered into his office and hid themselves to come and find out the secret of the life of this professor. Beloved, they were surprised when the man came into his office in the morning, opened the door, locked the door against himself, and started to praise God. After praising God, he started to read his Bible. And he went into prayer. Beloved, when they watched him, they found out that the secret of the strength of his life was that he was working with God. Beloved, if people check your own life now, what will they find as the secret of your life? Will they find out that you are successful in life because you are working with God? Beloved, apart from Enoch, apart from Noah, that the Bible mentioned as people who work with God, there are other people who work with God. One of them happened to be Abraham. Abraham worked with God in his life. God called out Abraham's father, Terah, in Genesis 11, verse 31. God asked Terah to leave his father's land and go to the land of Canaan. But beloved, when Terah got to a place called Haran, Terah settled down there. He cannot work with God. And he died at Haran. Beloved, as God called you to work with him, as God told you that he's taking you to a place in life, but one way or the other, you have settled in the wrong bus stop. Thank God for Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, God spoke to the son of Terah called Abraham. And God asked him, get thee out of this country, out from thy kindred, out from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. Beloved, Abraham walked with God by obeying him. What can we learn from the life of Abraham? Beloved, those who walk with God, they listen to his instructions and they obey him. Those who walk with God, they listen to instruction and they obey him. I want to ask you today, do you listen to God's instruction? Are you obedient to God's instruction? Sometimes, some people, God will give them instruction and they get annoyed. Number two, beloved, Isaac was the son of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 26, we read how Isaac was living at a difficult time. He wanted to run to Egypt. But God called him to dwell in the land that God will tell him of. God said, so journey this land and I will be with you. Beloved, he walked with God. When he walked with God, Genesis 26 verse 13 says, And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Beloved, when you look at the life of Isaac, you will find that those who work with God, they seek his counsel. They don't just take actions, take steps. They don't just go to places without seeking the face of their God. I want to ask you again today, are you working with God? David happened to be another example. Who work with God? Beloved, the secret of the success and the great aspects of David was because he worked with God. We are told in the Bible that David fought about 66 battles and he lost none. Beloved, why? He knew how to work with God. Hear the testimony of David in Psalm 55, verse 17. He says, Every evening and morning, and at noon will I pray 
and cry loud, and he shall hear me. Beloved, those who walk with God, they don't forget to pray. Those who walk with God, they don't just pray in the morning alone. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry loud. Beloved, are you walking with God? Do I need to tell you the example of Daniel? He walked with God. In fact, because he walked with God, he refused to pollute himself with the meat and the wine of the king. He walked with God. Beloved, are you working with God? Those who walk with God, they will run away from things that can pollute their lives. Those who walk with God, they will not company with the wicked. Those who walk with God, they will not company with those who do not know God. I'm asking you again, beloved, today. Are you working with God? Probably as you are listening to me now, you may be saying that we are only talking about People in the Bible, beloved, have heard and have seen examples of people who, are, who lived in a generation who walk with God. One of them happened to be a man called Pa J.S. Elton. J.S. Elton. He lived at Elisha. He was a prison. In the late 1930s, God asked him to come to Nigeria. Beloved, by divine guidance, Pa Elton left Britain. He came to Nigeria. And God directed him to Elisha. And he was working as a missionary. He was working as an evangelist. He was a teacher of the word of God. He was one of the people who God used to groom many of the great men of God that you have in Nigeria today. Beloved, he left the comfort of Britain and came to enjoy the hardship of Nigeria. Why? He walked with God. Beloved, what is your own testimony? Are you working with God? I know many of us who are living today, we are still fresh about the story of Archbishop Benson Idraosa, a man that was raised in Benin City. Beloved, from the age of 19, that he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. He worked tirelessly for the gospel. Beloved, Archbishop Idaosa manifested the power of God. He moved throughout this country for crusades and people saw the power of God manifested through his life. He worked with God. My brother, my sister, are you working with God? What are the things you are doing for God in your life? Are you really working with God? Let me share with you the characteristics of people who work with God. The characteristics of people who work with God. Number one, I have found out that those who work with God, they know God personally. Or let me put it another way. Those who work with God, they have personal encounter with God where they surrender their life unto Jesus Christ. Have you had that experience in your own life? Can you remember a day in your life when you say, Jesus, I surrender the whole of my life unto you? You need to have that encounter to be able to work with him. Beloved, when you are born into this world, you are not born into Christianity. Each one of us, we need to take a decision to surrender our lives unto God. I want to ask you today, have you taken that decision in your own life? Now, back to characteristics of those who work with God is that they obey God. They live their lives in obedience to the word of God. Whatever God asks them to do, they do it. They make the word of God the standard for their own living. Beloved, what are your own standards? Are you living in obedience to the word of God? If in any way you are disobeying any part of the word of God, it's an indication that you are not working, you are not working with God. Number three thing that I see, beloved, 
with people who are working with God is that they live in righteousness and run away from sin. They live in righteousness and they run away from sin. Beloved, we are living in a world now where people come to church and they are comfortable also living in sin. Beloved, it's an indication that you are not working with God. I'm pleading with you as I minister today that please, if you are a child of God, if you are one of us going to heaven, please run away from sin. Run away from wickedness. Run away from the works of darkness. Refuse to seek satanic powers for your help. Beloved, those who work with God, they commit themselves to a life of holiness. Beloved, people who work with God don't tell lies. People who work with God don't beat their wives or beat their husbands. People who work with God don't company with the ungodly. People who work with God, their yes is yes and their no is no. Beloved, people who work with God, they are not the type that will be fighting you all the time. They don't even fight you. People who work with God, they forgive easily. When you hurt them, they forgive you and that's, and that's all. If they hurt you, they will be humble enough to tell you that they are sorry. Beloved, I want to ask you, are you working with God? Are you working with God? Are you one of them working with God? Yes. Number four characteristics that I see with those who are working with God is that they are busy in the kingdom of God. When you see people who are truly working with God, they serve God in the church. Unfortunately, many people are serving God in the church because they want the pastor to see them. Beloved, some people are not serving God. They are serving the pastor. Beloved, that service you are doing in the church of God, are you doing it for God or are you doing it for man? If the pastor offends you, will you get another that says, I'm leaving the church. Pastor has offended me. Or even a member of the church offends you. Will you say, no, I'm not working for God again because a member has done this to me. Beloved, it's an indication that you are, you are serving man. Beloved, those who work with God, they are busy in the service of Jehovah God. Beloved, those who work with God, number five, they run away from sin and from anything that God does not approve. I want to ask you, do you have divine, godly values in your life? Are you following the values of God Almighty? Beloved, work with God. Work with God. Let me also tell you, number six, those who work with God, they fear God and do His will. They fear God and do His will. I want to ask you, my brother, my sister, do you really fear God? The way you are living your life, do you fear God? Is the fear of God in your own life? I had the story of a man who on a Sunday morning refused to go to church, but got four of his sons to follow into the farm to go and steal. And he placed the one son in each of the four corners of the farm. He was not the one who planted those seeds, but he went there to steal the yam of somebody else. He now asked his children to be looking for anybody that was coming. And that when they see anybody coming, they should whistle. Beloved, as the man was about to steal the first tuba of yam, the youngest son whistled. And the man ran to him, who is coming? And the man said, the youngest son said, Daddy, somebody is looking at you from up. Beloved, that thing you are doing, do you do it because somebody else is looking from at you from up up? Do you know that there is God in heaven that sees the works of men? The God that sees those things you are doing in secret. Do you fear God? Those who work with God, they live in the fear of God. Another thing that I see with those who work with God, they have 
daily communion with God. They have daily communion with God. Beloved, you cannot tell me you are working with a God that you do not meet with. You cannot tell me that you are working with a God that you meet with only once in one week. People who truly work with God, every day their hearts long after Jehovah God. Every day they have a time in the day or multiple times in the day when they have quiet time alone with God. Beloved, I am, I've come to you today to challenge you to work with God. Why? There are benefits of working with God. There are benefits of working with God. What are those benefits? That we come to your life by your working with God. What are the benefits of working with God? Beloved, number one benefit that I see in the life of those who work with God is that God protects them. God protects those who work with him. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that is a time when you need to work sincerely and closely with God, it is such a time of the pandemic that you are in. Beloved, those who work with God are such a time as this. God protects them under his own shadow. So my brother, my sister, please work with God. Number two benefits of working with God is that when you work with God, you will be open to the voice of God. Those who work with God, God speaks with them. God speaks to those who work with him. Beloved, if you claim to be a child of God, and God does not work, speak to you, something must be wrong with that relationship. Because John chapter 10 verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Beloved, benefit of working with God is that you will have the privilege of being open to the voice of God. I want to ask you, has God spoken with you this morning? Have you had the voice of God in your life today? Beloved, those who work with God, our Father, our God, our Creator, our Daddy speaks with them. It's only bastards who will not hear the voice of their Father. Beloved, are you working with God? Number three benefits of working with God is that those who work with God they are exposed to divine revelation. Revelations are referred to as some deep secrets that ordinary people do not know about. Beloved, God our Father revealed deep secrets unto us. Genesis chapter 18 verse 17. Genesis chapter 18 verse 17. God himself gave a testimony about Abraham who walked with him. Genesis 18, 17 says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Beloved, those who walk with God, God reveals secrets to their lives. Can I shock you? There are people that God has spoken to about what he will do in their lives in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years. They hear from God. Beloved, I want to ask you, has God spoken to you about your life? What are those things about your future that God has spoken to you about? Those are part of the things that those who work with God enjoy. Beloved, number four thing, benefit, of working with God is that those who work with God, they enjoy supernatural manifestation of God in their lives. They enjoy supernatural manifestation. They receive power to operate in signs and wonders. John chapter 14 verse 12 says, John chapter 14 verse 12, 
It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Beloved, let me tell you, if a man or a woman works with God, if you attack such a person, God will show his power in the life of that person. God will show his wonder. There are ages of miracles. Ages that oppress in the supernatural because they work with God. Number six benefits. Number six benefits of working with God is that people who work with God, they enjoy divine guidance. God telling you, this is the way you should go, my child. My child, this is the way you should not go. Psalm 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way you shall go. I will guide thee with my own eyes. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way you shall go. I will guide thee with my own eyes. Beloved, let me tell you, beloved, one of the best things you can do to help your life is to decide to work with God. Because when you work with God, God will instruct you. Number seven benefits of working with God is that when you work with God, and those who work with God, God give them victory in the battles of life. God give them victory in the battles of life. Psalm 43 verse 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Beloved, victory in the battles of life. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them from them all. Beloved, walk with God. That is one of the greatest things you can do to help your life. Beloved, do you know that those who work with God enjoy divine prosperity? They are not poor. Poverty is not a lot of those who work with God. Isaiah 48 verse 7 says, Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, and the Lord God, which teacheth thee to profit. Beloved, those who work with God, God teach them to profit and God teach them to prosper. Number eight, beloved, for those who work with God, they enjoy divine intervention. Those who work with God enjoy divine intervention of the Almighty God. If you put them into trouble, God will intervene for them. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. It says, For the Lord God will help me. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Therefore, have I set my face like a flint, and I know I shall not be ashamed. Beloved, I'm sharing with you benefits of working with God. I wish I would share with you testimonies of other people, but permit me to share with you my own personal testimony of working with God. I had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ at the age of 17 when I was in form 4. Beloved, that encounter happened at a scripture union you know, meeting in 1972. And when you look at 1972 to now, I've been working with God for the past 48 years. Beloved, in working with God, it saved me. It saved me from things that destroy other people. Beloved, in working with God, God has provided for me. I've enjoyed divine provision of God Almighty. Beloved, in working with God, God has led me all the way. When I look over my life, beloved, I've seen the mighty hands of God helping me. Do you know I, what I call God? I call God as my all-sufficient God. I don't need any other help other than the help of God. It's true, God, I need the help of man. 
but it's God that directs me to help me. Beloved, it is a blessed thing to work with God. The greatest thing you can do with your life, the greatest secret that can help your life is that you should decide to work with God. In writing up this message today, I want to share with you what you need to do to be able to work with God. What should you do to work with God today? Number one, please make sure that you've invited Jesus Christ into your life. Make sure that you've asked Jesus Christ into your life. So if you are listening to me today, please, if you cannot remember a day when you say, Jesus, this is my life. I'm surrendering it to you. Make today to be that day. That is the first thing you need to do to work with God. Number two thing that you need to work with God is that you must run away from sin. Uh, Joseph in the Bible work with God. And when his master's wife said, come and commit adultery or for adultery with me, Joseph ran away. Beloved, for you to work with God, you cannot be living in sin and think that you are working with God. Please, be sincere with your own life. Check your life. Is there any sin in any area of your life? Confess that to God. Ask Him to forgive you. And from today, decide by the power of God to, to stop those sins in your own life. Number three thing that you need to do to work with God is what I call determination. Beloved, it takes determination to work with God. Why did I say determination? You need determination to read the Bible. You need determination to spend time with God on a daily basis. You need determination to obey the word of God. Beloved, are you determined to work with God? Those who have feeble minds, who cannot make up their mind, they cannot work with God. You must be determined. Determination is very important. And beloved, number 14 that I will ask you to do to work with God is that decide that every day you will have a personal time alone with God. Decide that every day you will have a personal time alone with God. I'm not asking you to spend five minutes. Beloved, spend quality time alone with God. Spend quality time alone with God. In such a quality time, is a time when you come, you worship Him. It's a time when you allow God to speak to you from His written word. It's a time when you be quiet and allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak to your life. Beloved, if you do not spend time with God, it will be difficult for you to work with Him. You must make time every day to be with God. And lastly, beloved, do you want to work with God? Talk to Him in prayer. Talk to Him regularly in prayer. Somebody said prayer is the road with which the believers walk. I will say that it's not only prayer alone. Beloved, apart from prayer, the word of God is also a road with which the believers walk. Apart from the word of God, a life of holiness is also a road with which the believer walks. Beloved, there is joy in working with God. When you work with God, your God will fight for you. When you work with God, God will take care of all that concerns you. When you work with God, Whenever there is a plague, our God Almighty will protect you. I am inviting you today, beloved, to check your own work with God. Is God happy with the way you are working with Him? Do you think that you are doing your best in working with God? Are you working with God in the best possible way? Beloved, you need to, to be more serious with your work with God. As this message is going to an end, please, Ask yourself this question. Am I sincerely working with God? Beloved, be sincere with God. Do I really obey God? Am I really obeying God in my life? Ask yourself this question. Am I living in holiness and in truth? 
Is my heart seeking after God? Do I talk with my God that I love regularly in my life? The way you are reading the Bible, is my God happy with you? Are you hungry for the food or the spirit which is the word of God? Is your spirit man hungry now because you are depriving your spirit of the word of God? Beloved, are you praying? Are you talking with God in prayer? I want you to close your eyes wherever you are and talk to God like this. Say, oh God, my father. Oh God, my father. Where I have failed in working with you. Where I have failed in working with you. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. And forgive me today. And forgive me today. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, my father. Where I have failed in working with you. Show me mercy. And forgive me today. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, my father. Where I have failed in working with you. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. And forgive me today. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, where I have failed in working with you, show me mercy and forgive me today. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Do you know the many prayers you want to pray today? If you have not personally surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, these prayers may not benefit your life. And that's why, please, if you know in your heart that you are still living in sin, if you know in your heart that you belong to a satanic group somewhere. Search your own heart. If you know in your heart that you are living in the sin of immorality, if you know in your heart that you are still lying, if you know in your heart that there are some people who have offended you and you have refused to forgive them, I want you to know that you need to make peace with God by accepting Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. That's why today, if you know you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to close your eyes, lay your right hand on your chest, and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word this morning. Today, I've decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Help me to walk with you. Take over the whole of my life. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, those of us who pray that prayer, I want you to know that God has answered your prayers. I want you to know that because of that prayer, the Spirit of God will come to your heart and will be directing you to serve God. Please, from now on, obey the Spirit of God in your life. Open the Bible, get a Bible, and start to meditate and study the Word of God regularly. Please, get rid of every satanic material in your possession. If you have juju in your house, go and burn it. Or take it to children of God to help to burn it. Any power that is not of God in your possession, get rid of it. And also, check those people you are following. If you are following the ungodly, stop that relationship with them and God will help you. With this, I know that we can all now pray. I, wherever you are, I want all of us to rise up. Let us rise up. As you now pray these prayers together. You will pray like this. Say, the grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. Come upon my life afresh. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life afresh. In the name of Jesus. The grace to walk with God. Come upon my life. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say. Hunger for holiness. Hunger for holiness. And hunger for the word of God. Possess my life. In the name of Jesus. Hunger for holiness. And hunger for the word of God. Possess my life. In the name of Jesus. Hunger for holiness. 
An hunger for the word of God. Possess my life. Possess my life. Hunger for holiness. An hunger for the word of God. Possess my life. Possess my life. Hunger for holiness. An hunger for the word of God. Possess my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say, oh God. oh God, anything you are not happy with in my life, tell me now and help me to stop it. In the name of Jesus, oh God, anything you are not happy with in my life, tell me now and help me to stop it. In the name of Jesus, oh God, my Father, anything you are not happy with in my life, help me, tell me now. And help me to stop it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say the benefits that those who work with God receive. The benefits that those who work with God receive. Start to manifest in my life. Start to manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus. The benefits that those who work with God receive. Start to manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus. The benefits that those who work with God receive. Start to manifest in my life. Start to manifest in my life. The benefits that those who work with God receive. Start to manifest in my life. Start to manifest in my life. The benefits that those who work with God receive. Jesus, my Pray. Pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you because you have helped us to take a decision for a closer work with you. Father, let the anointing to work closely with you come upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hunger for righteousness. Hunger for truth. Hunger to obey you and to do your way. Let it possess us as from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father, in this, our community, in our area, Lord, let men and women know that you are our God. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I want to thank God for your life. Thank God that you've been part of of this service, beloved. If we'll be meeting physically, you will notice that your service is not complete until you also give your offering unto God. So at this time, beloved, whatever offering you want to give for the work of God, you are free to pay it into our bank account electronically. If you don't know the bank account, please call me and I will make it available to you. By the grace of God, we meet on Tuesday for our Bible study. And I know that God will be with you. Please, throughout today, make up your mind that you want to work closely with God. Let us share the grace together at this time. The grace. The, the grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ the, the love of God, God, God and the, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Amen. Amen. Seven times giving hallelujah with God, to God. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you.